Whitney. Yeah. So, do you want to introduce yourself for the? I'm Bobo. <laughs> also known as Triple F Queen. I'm yes. No Tagline Wit, and we are doing a very special interview edition. Yes, we're excited. We are really excited to talk about Antidote, the comic book. Yes. Or issue. Um, and we have here with us. Well, do you want us to do your your full name with the with the third and everything, Will? <laughs> well, you know what, my my mom would appreciate that. So yeah, go what, go ahead. That's fine. Yeah. That's All fine. right, and we are here, we are here with William Lee Map the, the third. third. Count it, y'all. <laughs> and I uh, gotta say, Will, I love your your background and everything. Mm -hmm. Oh, um, yeah. That, that, that was a comic. mess. I, I had to get in here real quick and arrange all of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're going to, we're going to, um, this is like our maybe second. We've, we've been about town and whatnot, but this is our, um, first one that we're recording that we're going to put out that's here so we're, we got to get our um our background game on point like yours yeah, yours is a little bit better you know we've got like half of her decorative art <laughs> in the shot <laughs> but i love it because you have a big poster of your comic right in the back so that's just awesome it's thank very you. cool yes thank you all um, right we can get into this right yeah let's do it All right. so first will can you tell us about yourself please about myself mm -hmm. um i think i'm a nerd's nerd um <laughs> i, I am really <laughs> are you a blurred that's one of the questions i had are you a blurred <laughs> yes i am a blurred true and true i used to make my own you know games on paper when i was in uh sixth grade that's how nerdy i am it's pretty bad it's that's pretty awesome i was reading your <laughs> um i found your website and was reading some of your um about you page and i saw that you've done some game development that's pretty cool that's awesome yeah it's a lot of fun it's a lot of fun i All actually of our miss it dumbs, you know <laughs> i used awesome. to write harry potter fan fiction <laughs> nice <laughs> nice so for yeah. real so like over the summer I'm, I'm really excited but at blurred con we're going to be releasing some nerd erotica that i wrote <laughs> That I wrote and we had it uh, recorded. You, you, ha if you be, you have to listen to it. We're gonna have some headphones. So and... It's like a, it's like a podcast, but erotica. Nerd erotica. <laughs> <laughs> I can <laughs> dig it. We can dig it. <laughs> Very cool. Um, can you tell us some more about your background? In um, uh, is it the first comic you've ever done or? created so oh man that's so this is my first comic um mm -hmm. but the characters inside the book the the jessica gray marty khalil williams those are characters i've been tossing around in my head for many many years and i started novelizing the jessica gray character mm -hmm. got sixty thousand words in <laughs> 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 and I kind of hit one of those blocks. And so what actually what actually brought about Antidote is, you know, I had the character already in mind. And around Gamergate, I was I was in this group with a bunch of women and it was like, who's gonna look out for us? And so it started to crystallize around that idea. And I was like, okay, I know exactly how I'm gonna write Marty Danes. And then the book started to convalesce around that. And then we have uh Antidote. Oh, that's cool. That is pretty cool. So how did you get around this group of women? I find myself around lots of groups of women. I don't know how. I don't know how. <laughs> Here we are. <laughs> I, 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 exactly. It's like, I, I, don't, I don't know how, but for whatever reason, I'm always in groups of women and, and talking it up and talking trash. And you know, it, it just kind of works out that way. Okay. Um, <laughs> And so, yeah, this is, this is, I'm, I'm talking to y'all today, as a matter of fact. <laughs> yeah, it's very cool because um, the way that you wrote this, um, I mean, not to get too much into the story yet and still want to hear uh, more about you before we get more into the comic, but the way that you wrote a um, woman of color, a LGBTQ woman of color, it reminded me a little bit of like, um, uh, what what is his name? Larson's first name? Jonathan Larson. Jonathan Larson, okay. the uh, the writer of Rent. How mm -hmm. he, um, you know, he didn't have HIV or anything, but he wrote um, to support the people in that community. So mm -hmm. 
you kind of remind me of him in that way where, um, you know, obviously you're not a woman, (laughs) (laughs) but you're writing these characters in support of like women, um, LGBTQ, the community. And I think that's really cool. Well, thank you. Um, I have to thank the people that I hang out with Um, here in D.C., um, my partner and I, we, we hang around different groups and alternative communities. Um, my, my partner's a, a, a burlesque dancer from time oh, cool. to time. And so um, we're actually in, you know, a lot of groups with uh, LGBTQ and trans people. And we, we kind of kick it. We were, but last week we were kicking around an idea about a spaceship pirate group. That, <laughs> <laughs> so, awesome. so, like, so like we kind of kick it and, you know, like, Those are the people I hang out with, and um, I've had the privilege of being in on some conversations and and being told some stories, and people share stuff, and um, I can't, I got to thank them for just, you know, having me be a part is all, really, I guess. Mm, Very cool. cool. Very cool. And so, um, do you kind of see this story as a, you diving into some activism and stuff? Because Marty's, like, very take- this whole issue of like women being wronged into her own hands, exposing this. And she's like, I don't want to call her a vigilante, but she (laughs) may. I don't know. I think, I think she, I think you could call her a vigilante. You don't have to put on a cape and tights. That's true. That's true. (laughs) And I like that she doesn't have a cape and tights, but it's like, she's very active about this particular issue. So do you think it like, would you consider yourself, or this piece, part of activism for women and the things they suffer? Um, I I would like to, like, I, I guess to, to level set, I'm not a black woman, but, you know, I love black women. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think that, I think that the character needs to speak out. And I think those people need to have their voice heard. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that for me, it's kind of normal because I hang around you know, various groups of people and I can get it firsthand. You know, I can get all the lamentations firsthand and all the good stuff and bad stuff. But I think a lot of people just don't really hear, you know, those types of stories or have those conversations where they can just find out that, you know, people are people. Mm -hmm. And, you know, all of us are just trying to kick it. We all just want a better life for ourselves, for our family, for our kids. And um, I've, I've just had the privilege of just just having heard a lot and knowing a lot. Like one of my friends uh, used to work at DC Rape Crisis Center and mm. I had some really, just really just terrible, harrowing stories. And a lot of people don't get a chance to really hear that. And that might be the reason why they don't understand mm-hmm. some of those issues. Yeah. Uh, representation is always really important, even if it's not just like, demographics but just hearing other people's stories helps us to be more empathetic yes yes definitely yeah absolutely and knowledgeable too because mm. you don't know unless you hear i always i just always encourage people to tell their stories because like i said a lot of people are ignorant of who lives who dies who tells your story oh <laughs> sorry <laughs> sorry will you might not might not have heard our podcast before we, we sing a we, lot but we, she sings the most okay all <laughs> like, right Juke class. I can work in a song, you know, on anything. Pretty like much. it's it's a skill, actually. <laughs> I, I like that game where it's like Shazam it, or she could be the the Shazam for real. Oh, that's she, awesome! Come up with one word, and a song will come out. Oh, that's awesome! <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yeah, but I was I was curious. Like, so for antidote. What would you mm-hmm. say? Um, it was hard for us to kind of pin down the genre. We felt yeah. like it could fit in like different things, like. It's suspense, mm-hmm. um, like with the yeah, 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 and then with the what happens at the end. It's mm-hmm. a, it's a. I, I think that could even put it in as a thriller. Mm-hmm. So, like, what would you say? Um, what would what genres would you put it in? So, I would like to describe Antidote as the Pelican Brief meets the Equalizer. Like, and, <laughs> and, and that seems to resonate with people. Mm-hmm. Um, I've I've always enjoyed journalism and All the mm-hmm. President's Men mm-hmm. is one of my favorite <laughs> one of my favorite movies. And so there's a mm-hmm. comment in here where Marty's like, you know, I could be the next Woodstein, right? Um and so it is very much crime noir mm-hmm. political thriller. Um I like DC, that crime noir. I, I live see, I'm getting that. 
10 miles from DC. And so oh. po- politics is out is our national local news. And mm-hmm. so like all the dirt <laughs> that goes <laughs> on in this town, um, it, it'll weave itself in the fabric of the story. Wow. All right. Okay. So crime noir, is it everybody? I like that. That's a wonderful genre. Um, I know. I like those movies. The, um, what is the, the, the no more movies from back in the, like the black and white ones mm-hmm. that they make you watch in film class. <laughs> Plus I just like that word noir. It's just noir. so cool. It's for black, basically. No, noir. noir. I know. It's so cool. It just rolls off the tongue. You sound fancy when you say it. Yes. <laughs> so do you think you'll be staying in that genre as the story progresses? Um, yes, uh, I think well, as the story progresses, there are going to be times where you may not like what Marty comes up with. Mm. Um, the the first few pages of issue two are being illustrated. And mm. even my illustrator was like, you know, Will, <laughs> 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 it's like I'm illustrating this, but I, I just don't know about Marty. It's like, well, you're not supposed to. <laughs> to be honest, I like that. I've always been a person who's more kind of drawn to like they villains. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, villains are any villain. heroes. Well, I'm just saying in general, she's not a villain, but like I'm always drawn to. I feel like villains and antiheroes are usually more dynamic, mm-hmm. rounded characters a lot of times, sometimes than like the heroes. So like, there was Hercules and Xena. I loved Xena. I started mm-hmm. with Hercules, and I liked that Xena show. But Xena was so complicated yeah. because she had she slit she had backslides. Yes. Just like Batman versus Superman. Batman's much cooler because he's more dynamic. Right. Superman's a little bit too black and white. Yes. Mm. But yeah, Batman and Xena have depth. You know? Yes. Yeah. There, there's really more to it. Um, and Xena ran longer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was. Batman, it was. <laughs> oh. But yeah. Cool. So, like, is this going to, so is Antidote going to be a, is this a limited series? Is it going to be long running like X-Men where it's like there's no, um, well, the opposite of limited series, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, I, I guess, if have you, are you asking if there's going to be a complete arc just for Antidote? So, the, so the first three episodes form mm-hmm. their own arc. You know, and that's the if if you if you're reading the book, that's the Mikey the Baddest Bitch series. Um, <laughs> I like is, that. Is, I like that. Is, is the first arc, um, but then we have other stories planned already in development where they've already been outlined. Mm-hmm. Um, Marty's going to kick a little bit more ass. Um, Marty's going to c- cuss some more people out. <laughs> you know? And so it's uh, it, it's not it's not limited in that uh, mm-hmm. perspective, but in general, we're going to have three issue uh story arcs okay cool cool speaking of do you have like an estimated release date for the next issue um so it's really hard doing this (laughs) (laughs) we're gonna actually have stuff later (laughs) yeah yeah so we're planning on releasing it in november again Ah. um yeah um i'd like to get these out uh sooner but in the middle what we're trying to do is um have short stories Oh, may, very cool. That may fall in between the actual issues. And we'll, and I don't know if we'll put them online or anything yet, mm-hmm. but um, one short story will also be available by BlurCon. And that's oh. kind of where we're trying to have the first seven pages of issue two illustrated and colored. Um, and when we did this last year, we actually gave people, you know, preview copies of issue number one as part of like trying to promote the uh, comic. Awesome. Cool. Yeah, but speaking of, um, we know that you um, sold out <laughs> of the comic, so congratulations on that. Okay. That is Thank amazing. You. So um, that's the <laughs> that's the the physical version, right? People so can still is, get the. So this is the one I kept. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the the special edition that I kept, mm-hmm. and this is this is the number two. I screwed up. I thought I was going to keep the number one, but this is the number two uh, copy of it. But yes, uh, we sold out the physical one, mm-hmm. um, but you can get it on Comixology, the app. Okay. So you can actually search for Antidote and get it in Comixology. I dare say, um, our illustrator, Melissa, I dare say that she has a very dynamic experience for Comixology because mm-hmm. it, it zooms in and it zooms out and it pans oh. as, you, as you progress through the story. And so it's actually really, really cool. 
Oh, that sounds awesome. Yeah, that's is really, that, really do cool. Do you have to like subscribe to that service or is that just um, app, or... You can buy one-offs. And so Comixology is free. And okay. if you have Amazon and also it's on the lending list too. So you <laughs> theoretically get it for free if you borrow it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you can, if you download the app and uh, you can actually get it uh, for, for the lending list as well. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, cool. But, um, sorry, last month. Where did, um, so how did you sync up with your illustrators? Oh man. It's, uh, so, so Melissa and Patrick are a married couple. Mm -hmm. And when I was doing game development, I had created a game called Cupcake Diva. I had the concept and everything down Mm -hmm. and I wrote a character description for the character, the main star of the, of the app or the game. And I burned through like 15 illustrators. <laughs> <laughs> like the character description was weird. I was, it was like combination Rihanna, combination Mrs. Huxtable, combination, <laughs> combination strawberry shortcake. So it was like all of these different <laughs> archetypes and, and people thought I was nuts. And then, you know, I met uh, Melissa somewhere online mm-hmm. and she gave me like three or four sketches and I was like, that's it. And, and so far from there, we started collaborating on just about everything and she she can actually understand my crazy when i describe a really abstract thing she was like is this is this what you're you looking for what? Like, you're yeah. not crazy because i had the same problem when i was <laughs> writing my uh, children's book and i was trying to get an illustrator and i thought i had found because um my family's from nigeria and it was like a nigerian based like folklore type of story so i wanted somebody who could understand that and i found an illustrator but i was explaining it to her and she wasn't getting it and i was like i like her style but she wasn't getting me and i had to send her <laughs> pictures of this she's like this girl looks like a modern la negra but with an african twist and this and, and she was just it was just not working and i was like well so when you find that one that like, this is it yeah so it's yes. not crazy I, it's not crazy i get you you gotta have the right person that gets your vision you right. do Right. Speaking so, of so what's, it, your, what's your children's book though? Well, it, it was. It's not <laughs> this is always when I hit her with the Stewie from Family Guy. So oh, you go finish that novel. You go oh, finish that time. no, no. Finish that thing. Come on, come on. It's not. It's not out yet. I keep like playing with the idea of changing it. <laughs> I keep playing with the idea of changing it and doing something different. And then I was like, oh, well, maybe I'll make it a musical. And then I'm, I don't know. I'm trying to figure out what I want to do with it. <laughs> and so it's just, it's not out anywhere right now. <laughs> but it's still something I want to do. <laughs> hey, hey, look, I got a novel that 60K words in. And <laughs> <laughs> I, I've had some, some 20,000 uh, word things that are, I'm like not even working on anymore. So, um, what are you going to do with the 60K one? Oh, so, so it is, um, so here, um, I have a habit of creating like everything in the same universe, like mm-hmm. all of our games and everything's in the same universe. That's transmedia. It's awesome. That's yeah. what Marvel is doing. <laughs> so I, I'm telling, I'm all for that. And so, um, it's called Scour oh. and the file that Marty alludes to it's in this scour. comic is one of the primary MacGuffins in the novel. <laughs> <laughs> that ah. Jessica Gray, and so like that, the scene where they're in the Library of Congress, mm-hmm. and thank you, Khalil. Khalil Williams is a real person. Oh, works at, works at the Library of Congress, so I put him in. in the <laughs> the he gave us this really great underground tour through all the tunnels and everything. Oh, cool! Um, so the scene that's in the comic is also in the book, and then that's kind of where their stories diverge and then they converge uh, later on. So it's it's real. Yeah, I'm nuts. It's real. Is the yeah. novel about someone else, is, or Marty's the main person in there too? So Jessica Gray, the ex spy mm-hmm. Private Eye, mm-hmm. she's she's the main uh, protagonist in that in the novel. Mm, okay. Speaking of, I was um, I was really interested in the kind of like friendship or relationship between Marty and Jessica, because like reading the comic, it's like the, at the um, event that Marty like party crashed um she was very kind of like very kind catty, of catty. Very but then reading it it's like oh it looks like they were friends in college. college this seems like a like, very complicated like, relationship yeah <laughs> yeah so uh so it, it was a, it's one of those divergent things where mm-hmm. jessica is an inside player you know mm-hmm. she's on the inside of all the dirt and everything and trying to contain that stuff 
Marty is a journalist. She's always trying to expose this stuff. So mm. like, but th- at the same time, they both have a bend towards, all right, this is some crap. You know, <laughs> we got to take this person down, right? Mm. And so they, they collaborate in a very, very, uh, uh, very difficult, <laughs> very difficult <laughs> that, that, that make Now it makes more sense. It's like you illuminated that particular thing to us because we were both like, well, we just gonna have to get some extra, some some more copies to understand what's going on there. You know, so <laughs> I wanted to know like what's happening because it's like they were getting at each other as if they weren't doing the same thing, and they, they well, they both don't feel like they are. So I was just like, what's going on here? You know. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, there's a line in there where Jessica says, half of these people are my clients and they're exactly. women. Exactly. Right. And and so it's, it's, it'll be, it's cool. I'm 60K in, give me, give me some time. Like you, you give him, you give him Bola some time. Give me some time. I'll, oh yeah, I'll, I'm I'll not actually the... giving Bola time. <laughs> she gets on me all the time. I, I hassle her. <laughs> if it comes up, she'll, she'll do so the Stewie thing. Are you going to go oh. traditional publishing with it? Are you going to self-publish? What are you thinking for the novel? Um, I would rather go traditional okay. um, with that one. Um, okay. It's been fun doing the, the Astrid thing, though. I have enjoyed that, but I would rather, you know, try to ship that around. Um, mm-hmm. I've been trying to meet some various people in publishing. Um, so once I get to that point, I'm hoping that we can we can go the traditional route on that one. Okay. Makes sense. Um, speaking of, and this might, um, <clears throat> so some other people who are having a hard time actually publishing Pushing publish. about Will. Oh, Can you no. focus on Will, please? Um, I am talking about Will here. Will, can you tell <laughs> us? <laughs> so how did you, can you tell us about the process of actually getting something published? Like from the time that you thought, okay, I want to have something that's kind of a, <clears throat> excuse me, a tangent mm-hmm. from the novel to the time that you published um, Antidote. What did your, what did the process look like for you? Oh, it was blood, sweat, and tears. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so the the entire process. So, I write a lot. Uh, yeah, like I wrote sixty thousand words and it's still not finished. Mm-hmm. I write a lot, and so the editing process is like you're you're cutting out all of my good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> do you and have so, an editor? I do. I do. Oh, uh, awesome. Sarah Daniels has uh, edited my stuff, um, and then you know, so we've it goes through two sets of editing and Mm -hmm. I will go back and rewrite. Um, And I've actually had antidote test read. So Mm -hmm. like before I sent it to editing, I was like, you know, is this real? You know, does this feel right to you? You know, I I would ask my partner, I would ask, you know, a few friends um, and, and especially with getting the LGBTQ stuff, you Mm -hmm. know, down, it's like, am I, Am I making sure that I'm communicating this properly and I'm not, you know, just throwing some tropes out there mm. because because I'm a dude. And so I actually had it, <laughs> so I actually had it test read um, and then it went through editing, copy editing. Mm. And so from there, um, I gave it to Melissa and, and what everything is in a panel. And I've been teasing out some of the panel and scripting. Mm. on Instagram and actually showed took pictures of the pages of how we write the panels and how we describe the panels oh. so from there um Melissa would give me uh pencils mm-hmm. so she would do really really rough sketches of what each page would look like what each panel and we would go back and forth and, and we want more action here you know mm. um or we want you know Marty to have you know be more serious here or mm-hmm. you know we, we want Chelsea to really be you know, surprised that she would say that, you know, to hurt someone. Um, And so we would get through the pencil and then we would go through actually line sketches where basically it's everything on how you would look at it, but nothing has been colored. Mm -hmm. Um, And for this particular book, there are people of color. (laughs) There are people of color. (laughs) And so we're going back and forth on how brown is brown you know like <laughs> like this this is this is what I look like you know and, and it's like do, do these skin tones actually look like they would be real you know mm-hmm. and I have an array of black folks in this book so they all can't <laughs> they all can't look the same you know what? And, that's interesting you say that because we were kind of concerned we were asking ourselves is Marty like Afro-Latina or black or just you know like mocha black caramel black we, we just wanted to ask you that <laughs> oh no she's she's black my okay. black. Um, now, Jessica 
on the other hand, is mixed. She oh. is black mm. and white. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that that was part of one of the descriptions and mm-hmm. part of why she got a little bit of beef, you know, sometimes mm-hmm. every now and then. But that'll come <laughs> later. Um, <clears throat> and so and so we would color it. And then there there were times where I just don't know. And this is probably where Melissa gets upset with me. But, you know. <laughs> I don't know if we should be doing this in this panel or does it really make sense to have her walking? Um, There was a whole scene of Marty and Mikey in the backseat of an Uber, you know, Mm -hmm. that that turned out into this is like, we're going to redraw the whole thing, (laughs) you you know? (laughs) And so um, a a few cycles on that. um, And then the actual printing and getting it ready for print. Um, I work in digital primarily, like mm-hmm. game, video games and everything like that. I've never yeah. printed anything. Mm. So getting something from RGB to CMYK and having the colors mm. actually look like what we yeah. imagined them to look like, that was actually kind of tenuous too. This is really technical. Is this, this is like good stuff for the podcast and we could talk about we, more. Uh, <laughs> more we, we, are, we are multifaceted blurs. Like this is one of the, well, at least for me, this is like, I'm totally we blurting out about this. For ourselves too, because we need okay. some, we need asking some. for a friend. <laughs> <laughs> we need to hear, we need to know the process. And, and so we, we got a couple of uh, test prints made and mm-hmm. they were trash. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like they like they were they were muddy um mm. they weren't vibrant and you know you look on the screen and it was like they look like they're like navy instead of just brown and so oh. we had to go back and retune all of the colors mm-hmm. um so we went a couple rounds of that then we actually had our preview copies printed and they looked they look great because mm-hmm. and, and the, what was crazy was i picked them up the day before BlurCon, and mm-hmm. i was like if they suck now, I got nothing. <laughs> like, like I actually had nothing if this doesn't work out. But then they they look great, and you know, then we had you know antidote. We had it. We had it ready. We had it colored and everything. And um, I mean, the cover just like really just pops out at you. I mean, you can see for our viewers to the left of Will right there. Well, your left as you're viewing his right, but um, it just it yeah it does it pops. It, yeah, the colors look great. So, so this one, uh, and I'm sorry, but I I geek out about this one. Mm-hmm. So uh, this is the self cover. Like mm-hmm. this is made of the same paper that your normal comic book is. Mm-hmm. But we for the special edition, it's a harder cover. Mm. and it's glossy oh. that's the one and, for blurred con right yeah, it's the one for blurred con and it, okay. it pops like nothing else and it feels great in your hand too like mm. it's it's a really nice it's it's really nice i, I geek out about that one as well. <laughs> you have to save us some copies because we'll be at blurred con this year as well <laughs> yeah so like you i've been to everyone will <laughs> i've only been to one <laughs> in the past but i'm How definitely come I haven't seen you? you i don't know i i don't go as much for the um I guess the entertainment panels, I go for like the learning panel. So like if you were to do a workshop on like how you made the comic, that's the type of panel (laughs) I would go to. Those are the ones I go to. So, and then I'm not like a social butterfly. So I don't go to like the the dance party and stuff like that. I have to drag her. So she needed me those years. I go to the panels. I go back to my room (laughs) and watch Downton Abbey. Oh, (laughs) All right, so, all right, I have, I, I used to really love Down Abbey. I did, mm-hmm. I loved it so much. But then when Matthew got killed, I was like, this is crap. I, <laughs> I want my money back. I'm done. <laughs> because, I, and I felt like, this, I'm, this is a, I'm sorry, it's a tangent, but you brought up Down Abbey. So <laughs> they got, they got the farm back going, right? Or the, they got the rents going back with the, with the uh, property leasers. Mm-hmm. They, they have the Irish dude. They jump them in the family now. Everyone's cool, <laughs> you know. And then you kill Matthew off after they won the cricket game. I mean, like, who, <laughs> like, who does do that? Some, that actor, he just he didn't want to be on Downton anymore. That I was know, the main issue. So they had to kill him off. But I still, I still enjoyed it. Though, though, don't talk about the first movie because I haven't seen the movie yet. <laughs> because my friend who got me into Downton Abbey went and saw it in the movies didn't oh, even ask me if I, oh, I didn't know honestly, and my other friend oh, Liqua also went to see it by herself and i'm like oh, i wanted to see it i want to see it oh. personally i like i love british period piece things so i watch that by myself i go to the theater 
I'm so much into what I like. I will go by myself to watch stuff. <laughs> so I didn't even think she was still watching it. So oh, I was like, I'm oh. going because I don't know. Nobody else who wants to watch this. <laughs> not, not realizing she was still on it because she watches so much stuff. <laughs> I do watch a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff. She watches way more stuff than I <laughs> So I was like, I didn't even know you were still watching. <laughs> oh. Yeah, so we'll go to the new one, but you have to watch the, because I want to watch the new one. I'm up to date, okay? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so just we have another question for you. Sure. Um, well, if this is kind of like a feedback. So one of the things we encountered was uh, we had a little bit of confusion with mm-hmm. the thought, with the word bubbles. Mm-hmm. And so, especially in the beginning or certain scenes, we weren't sure, like, who was, like, following the, the action, right, Whitney? Uh, yeah, there was, like, maybe one page where we weren't sure which order. Mm-hmm. To no, go I, in. Mm-hmm, I mm-hmm. think I can. Was it was it at the Library of Congress when there was a back and forth between characters? Was it that one? I think it was like when it was like dark outside mm-hmm. and like um. Oh yeah. At the beginning. Oh. Was more the beginning. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. I, okay. I, I, I mean. I, I, yeah, it was second. during. It was some parts during the the the, the function mm-hmm. where the um. No, it was after the function. Yeah, and then like right after the function where it got night and they were leaving, mm-hmm. there were some parts where we were like, well, I don't know. And that, the funny thing is, we both read it at different times, and we both had that same feedback. Mm-hmm. So I wanted to like ask you about that, like, the, just what's up with that? Uh, is it that part? I think you need I to go back you... a little back. earlier. This is good. This is uh, because I think I know what you may be talking about. No, it was like more towards the beginning, right? More towards the beginning, and not that part where she's talking about her. Yep. Yeah, some of that, like some of that. Yeah. Yep, some of that we were kind of. I was, I was like, who is talking here? So, and then, like, I mean, I knew who was talking, but I didn't know which order I was supposed to go in. Yeah. yeah. So, so for that one, I, I will take the L on this one because <laughs> okay. what I really wanted to do was mm-hmm. I wanted to sell the friction between Marty and Jessica mm-hmm. in this scene. And I really wanted it to be like this really whisper. I'm whispering at you, but I'm cussing you out at the same time. I'm whispering because <laughs> mm-hmm. there's I all these other that. people it here. It came through on that. And so, and so I kept that. <laughs> <laughs> so no, I kept that it. That came through. You did a good job on that because I got, I, so, the, I got that they were almost like me. interrupting so, each so other. I, so I kept it. So, but, but now in the future, I'm, I will listen to my editor <laughs> more specifically. But okay. yes, I, I got you. I got right. you. I got you. But okay. yeah. But I otherwise, we honestly, we just, I just need more story. Like once that ending happened, <laughs> I was like, okay, so now I need to know what's popping off. You know? Oh, and to wrap, um, one last thing I wanted to to like comment on is the the actual the issue name. Uh huh. Because I didn't notice it until like the end, and I'm mm-hmm. looking for it. Is um, it not the fuckboys and incels line. Um, no, okay. and to do because uh, on, on the second page, so after the cover page, it says mm-hmm. only one night, only and one I just night. thought it was funny the way it connected to like mm-hmm. the very end of the issue where she's like, "Damn, we only had one night," <laughs> 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 and I just thought that was a, a funny and cool kind yeah. of full circle thing. <laughs> I liked that. Thank you. Well, cool. I'm glad you like that. Yeah, I like those type. I like I like callbacks and things like that where you mm-hmm. you don't always know where like a title comes from, and then you see and you're like, oh, that's cool. <laughs> I liked it. <laughs> awesome. Well, Do you have another question? No, I think we can wrap up. But we the only thing we wanted to know is um, we wanted to get um, for you to call out all of your um, your social, social links, you. your okay. website, etc., that you want people to go to to find out more about Antidote and anything else you're working on. Sure. Um, you can find out everything you want to about Antidote at astridcomics.com. Mm-hmm. That's uh, Astrid, like the divine wind, astridcomics.com. Oh. Uh, we are also Astrid Comics in Instagram, which seems to be where all the activity is. We have okay. a Twitter we have a Twitter account and a Facebook account, but Instagram seems to be where everything happens. And so mm-hmm. check out check us out there on Instagram. You can get us on Amazon too. You can go to okay. Amazon.com, search antidote, you'll find us up there. And you'll um, be a blurred con this year, everybody. Please. 
you you have to come to Blurcon. <laughs> so many Don't worry, cool things. We already got everything booked. <laughs> yeah, we're waiting a, to see if we got, we got the panel slot that we wanted. That's all we're waiting for. <laughs> okay, there's a murder mystery on day zero. Mm-hmm. You, you have to come to the murder mystery. Is it gonna be better than that last time? Because that one was not good. <laughs> oh, it's, it's, it's gonna be good. And okay. there's a bur- and there's another burlesque show. Oh, okay. I like the burlesque you, you, show. You, cool. You have to come to Blurcon. <laughs> okay. We will we will be there. We will be there. Okay, awesome. can I ask, do I have time for one more question? All right, you, can you, can ask, I have, you have all the time you want. Okay, so I'm going <laughs> to ask you something very blurty. I'm going to ask you, what is, um, do you know about unpopular opinions? No, I don't. So oh. it's basically where you, most people agree about this one thing, but you have the opposite. And okay. so I'm just going to give you like, I have a Disney one and an MCU one. <laughs> so oh. my MCU unpopular opinion is, I didn't really like the Loki series. <laughs> Everybody else did, but I didn't. And then my Disney one is, I think Lion King 2 is way better than Lion King 1. Oh, oh I will yeah. fight you on that. Uh, yes. Ooh. I will fight uh, you. I wanted to ask you, do you have a Disney and do you have an MCU unpopular opinion? So first of all, the fact that it was called the TVA, that, you know, the, the, the Tennessee Valley Authority, you had to be nerdy and appreciate that little tiny tie-in with the Loki series. I can't believe you didn't like the Loki series. That is terrible. That is, you know what? This has, this has rocked everything that I've come to learn <laughs> in this podcast. I don't know. I, I don't, I don't know. But uh, so. It's just like, the bottom for me. It, it is. It's just at the I, bottom. I didn't like WandaVision. <gasps> oh my God. See, okay, she's see, now you like, feel the same see, thing. See, yeah, see. My whole world is shook. <laughs> you just see our audible gas. Everyone I mean, there was a now. moment of silent and dead air for their for a moment. <laughs> okay. Ooh, I don't even know if we have well, time see, to get into it's this. Only, it's yeah, only I think one. We, we don't it's have only, time to get into it. It's only one show. It's only, it's only one series. Okay. All right. we'll, we'll, like that call. we'll like have Loki. to we'll have to do a follow up when your next uh, issue comes out and yeah, get like... more into because we gotta we got you know what maybe we'll do it actually at blurred Con, like <laughs> track you down be like <laughs> will <laughs> anyway Look. thank you so much will for this interview and we just we just congratulations it's so amazing to see and inspiring to see a person of color yes, like putting something out publishing this amazing intellectual property and just like and the creativity we're we're thank you inspired and thank you for like going out there and just doing it make sure thank there's you. two copies of the next I appreciate for it. us please please <laughs> well, I, I, wanna, I, will, I want the next piece <laughs> i will i will hook you up me too. Me too. Okay, so. All right. Take care, Will. We'll be Thank in touch. You, Will. Have a Thank great one. Have a Bye. great weekend. You too. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thanks for listening to our podcast. Please subscribe to our show on whatever podcast listening app you use and share the show with other blurred and non blurred family and friends. And if you like our episode, please rate and review us on iTunes. The intro and outro music is Twilight by Caption. You can find them on SoundCloud, the username Caption, spelled C-A-P-S-H-U-N. The show notes are by Bola Hansen, and the audio engineering is by Whitney Booker. And you can contact us by email at blurredtalkbw at gmail.com. And also, don't forget to get social, you guys. You can find us on our social media at Instagram and Twitter, with our at handle being at blurredtalkbw. And we've got our individual things going on too, y'all. So you can find me, your Blurred Fashionista, on Instagram and Twitter at Bola Story B. That's B with two E's like the insect. And I've got my own personal YouTube channel, just Bola Shade. That's B-O-L-A-S-H-A-D-E. D's and dog, E is an elephant. And this is Whitney. You can find me at my company, Luminavi Studios. The email address is wit at luminavi.com. That's W-H-I-T at L-U-M-E-N-A-V-I.com. You can also find me on Twitter at Luminavi Studios.